Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. exciting all right get amped up all right get that level of energy get it up because tonight all right we are bringing it all right we've got a great show tonight all right but like lisa baxter has already stated in her comments sharing is caring so please don't be stingy where's my mic all right where's my mic there it is don't be stingy please smash that share button all right, if you're new to the show, I am Jared A. Brown, the, the host of the Warriors Quest show, and I spotlight a chronic disease warrior every single week and, and get their story out there to help them find a living donor. That's what we do, all right? And that's what we're doing tonight is we have a kidney disease warrior, a kidney disease patient who needs help finding a living donor. All right, so we're going to be doing it. I need your help. All right, I need your help so we can share this. All right, let's get that information out there to the masses till they kiss our, all right, you know what I mean. All right, so I'm going to, before we bring on our special guest, all right, before we do that, boom, 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 that's right, boom, 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 this is Jared and I'm back. All right, I've got Lisa Baxter watching. I've got Jeff, my twin brother. I've got uh, Jonathan Trailer watching. All right, many people are already commenting. I love it. All right, and so I'm going to bring on a special co-host. All right, my co-host is Jeremy Paracco from New Jersey. All right, this this guy. All right, has had a he's had more or less a out of body experience. He was really officially dead for about 21 minutes. Maybe more. It may have been 28. We'll hear from him. All right. But he is still alive. No, but he's, he was counted out, but God didn't count him out. All right. And he's here with the purpose. I'm going to bring on, all right, Jeremy Paracco is my co-host. Uh, here we go. Co-host video intro. Here we go. Where's that co-host video intro? Bring it, co-host. What's happening? Good evening, Jared. Good evening, Jeremy. How you doing, my brother? I'm alive. Oh, good, good. Alive that's, is good. You know, that's the best way I can <laughs> say it right now. All right, all right. Well, alive is good, and I'm glad to have you on board. I'm glad to have you 
as my co-host. Um, did I, I may have been off on the minutes. I mean, how, how long were you, you know, how long were you dead? Was it 21 minutes, 28 minutes? It was 21 minutes when I looked right. at, the, um, at the notes. All right. That's what I thought. I thought it was 21. That is I was just 21 incredible. minutes with no heartbeat. Incredible. That is incredible. So life is short. My twin brother, Jeff here, forgive all, love all, and hold no grudges. Life is short. So Jeremy, um, we've got somebody that my twin brother has introduced me to. Uh, because our original guest has a rescheduled due to health reasons. And this guy, I, you and I both, I sent you the link, you know, um, the National Kidney Registry link, right? NKR. Yep. I you read and it. I read, yeah, you and I have already read it. It's pretty interesting. He's, you know, it's Nick. He goes, his name's Nicholas Gotti. It goes by Nick. Um, 68 years old, but he looks younger than I am. He's got a great look, young looking face, <laughs> you know, and, uh, uh, he's got, uh, you know, he's married with two adult children, four young grandchildren, which is awesome. And it, it reads that, you know, we, that he's been an executive chef in the New York city area for the past 30 years in restaurants. How impressive is that? That's really cool. I need to get some recipes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he says he received his uh, initial training, you know, at the Four Seasons restaurant. And I hear that the Four Seasons rocks. I hear that that is just a really good restaurant. I've eaten there. Have you? Do you like oh, it? Yes. All right. Oh, yes. All right. We'll, we'll have to talk to him a little bit more about that then. All right. So anyway, re um, please, again, don't be stand All right. Please share. You know, don't be stingy and please share it. All right. And we're going to get this guy's, we're going to get this guy's information out there because we are much stronger together than we are alone. And when we share, we care. All right. So please care and share. All right. Here we go. I'm going to give him a VIP intro. All right. VIP treatment. Here it comes. VIP. Stack it up, stack it up, stack it up, stack it up. Let's begin. Wow. Nick Gotti, welcome to the Warriors Quest Show, my brother. And thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome, man. I'm excited to do this. Um, man, impressive. It was almost like a resume that I was reading from uh, NKR. <laughs> I mean, that is impressive. Man, yeah. tell, us a, tell us a little bit about what started your interest in, you know, cooking and to become a chef? I, I'm totally interested in that. Well, uh, I, it's usually the simplest thing. All I right. Need a job. Okay. <laughs> I needed a job back when I was, right. back when I was yeah. in my early twenties, uh -huh. you know, I'd, I'd exhausted all other means. And, and I said, you know what, this sounds interesting. And, uh, uh -huh. so I applied and became a dishwasher and a pot washer in a discotheque in New York city. And, uh, <laughs> I love and, it. And yeah, and you know, then the chef let me uh chop parsley and open clams and oysters and and then uh he got me a job at the Four Seasons restaurant, you know. Wow. Unfortunately, it's not there any longer, but but uh and uh it was at the time, which is about 1980, 81, it was uh it was really it was really quite a quite an experience. So, and then one thing, you know, I worked in hotels, private clubs, uh other restaurants, you know, so, and I uh, spent the most of my career the last 20 years at uh, Alpine Country Club in Northeast New Jersey. So, all right. All right. Very nice. So, uh, you know, uh, the, it's, it sounds like uh, when you're talking about it, I, I just see that, you know, it, uh, your, your facial expressions and your emotions really kind of show that you've really enjoyed that. Uh, and I like passion, uh, you know, passion in anything I love. You know, like when I, when uh, our, you know, my co-host here, Jeremy Paracco, talks about some of the things he's done, and he talks, <coughs> he's talked about, when he's talked about his, um, God bless her soul, his, his late mother, um, his emotions, um, you know, you can see 
the love that he has on his face. And so I love passion. And when you talked about that, you showed a lot of passion in your face, you know, so you must have really enjoyed it for, you know, it may have started out as just needing a job, but it sounds like you really must have enjoyed it if you stuck it out and you did it for so long. Oh, yeah, it became my race on debt, you know, so, uh, uh -huh. it, yeah, so it, 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 you know, became my, you know, my defining existence and, and uh, put my kids through college, paid my mortgage. And uh, so I was happy to have it and uh, anything that could make me better doing it, I would. And and so I got to do a lot of things. I got to see, see some countries, eat in some Michelin three-star restaurants around the world wow. and, uh, you know, all very and, nice <laughs> and the business led me to do all of that so mm -hmm. so you know i it didn't give me a great diet but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but uh, that's on me you know so yeah so, uh, <laughs> right that the honest is on you okay yeah so but it was it was a good experience you know london paris rome you know wow it was, it was a lot of good stuff very cool yeah. so you know reading a little bit more um you know, uh, I, I read that you also enjoy not, um, chess. So, you know, uh, the thing I love about chess is that it's very strategic. And, yeah. you know, it's it's you've got to be calculated, if you know what I mean. And sometimes you're thinking about something you may be doing much later and you're setting things up, you know, so I like that. So what's uh, what do you what do you enjoy most about chess? Uh, well, I I started playing seriously in the in the 80s was because we didn't have a lot of money and and it was inexpensive to join the local club and and get out and be social with people uh-huh and then and then uh, you just enjoy the, the 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 friendly competition and and back with when i was doing it it was very friendly it's and uh and you it's like anything else you strive to be better at something and, and right uh, and and, uh, and that was basically it, you know. Was, was it strive, you know, striving to be better, playing some good people, getting better, being taught, teaching, you know, all of those come into play. So, uh, and and you know, the strategy of the game is the strategy of the game. You know, you uh, some you win, some you lose. Some you but, lose, but, yeah. Uh, you, know, you know, but it's 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 a, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's an old game and it's an ancient game and uh, yeah, a lot of fun. It's a good uh, that's strategy. Kind of, it is, yeah. And that's, you know, you say it's an old game, and that's part of the mystique, though. That's kind of what I like about it is that, you know, it, it's if it's lasted so long, you know, there, there must be something really good about the game, you know. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. But um, so let's uh, – I've got a question here that my, my twin brother Jeff is posing. Um, he's asking, what are, what are ways Nick uses to advertise his need for a kidney? Um, well, there's so, this – there's oh, this, sorry. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've I've been in contact with a local uh, food editor of our local newspaper, okay, at the North Jersey uh, Record, and uh, her last uh, message to me before she she went to Uruguay recently was to you know when she gets back she's going to do an article on me, uh, and so I joined Facebook for one of the things I've, I've never. I, I, I never paid attention to Facebook very much since 84, 85, uh, 85, I think it was. And uh, my account had been hacked, so I just stopped using it. A and uh, my mentor, uh, Lisa Thompson, uh, Lisa Thompson. advised me okay, to, to, yeah. go back, to go back on and, uh -huh. and uh, to spread the word far and wide on Facebook. And so I did. And and oh, I'm in, Lisa I'm, Thompson. I'm new to it, but but I'm yeah. currently you know doing that and, and little by little. So I'm kind of a private person, but you know I'm getting used to being out there. Lisa Thompson, she's great. I, oh, yeah. She's got she's got gusto. I, I love her uh, her moxie. I do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She you know just do it is uh -huh. just do it right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I watched her interview with uh, with uh, Uncle Jim not not too long ago. That was good. All right. So, yeah, she is a nice lady, Lisa. She is. She's great. Um, so, Jeremy, um, so you're from New Jersey, and Nick says mm -hmm. that he's – do you currently live in New Jersey, Nick, or are you just from New Jersey? Tell us a little bit. No, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, but I, I okay. currently live in New Jersey. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right. So, so Lisa I, I live in the northeast part of the state. Yeah. All right. Lisa Baxter right here. I'm going to bring her name up again. Lisa Baxter is from Brooklyn. Yeah. So.
Brooklyn in the house right now. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, when I think of Brooklyn, I think of the Beastie Boys. Aren't they from Brooklyn, too? I mean, yeah, their famous song, No Sleep Till Brooklyn, but I think they're Queens. That's family. right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, so, I, yeah, but, uh, I saw that show with Uncle Jim. Well, shout out to Sunset Park and, and uh, East New York. So, uh-huh. So, yeah, that's awesome. So, um, so New Jersey is, you know, it, I live in Utah and it's close to Colorado. And so it's very, the terrain and environment's very similar. Like we've got mountains, so does Colorado. And so what would you say is different, you know, since you've lived in both, you know, New York and New Jersey? What, what would you say, Nick, is, is something that would be different if you go from New York to, to, to New Jersey? Well, from, from well, I lived in Manhattan too. So coming out here was the suburban experience. Was uh, you know <laughs> very different. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, uh -huh. living and working in in the mid in, in Midtown, and uh, or or in parts of Brooklyn. I mean, it's it's there's. I I don't want to say one is necessarily better than the other, or or but it's it's certainly different. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, all right. All right, so Lisa says she lives in Queens right now, but she works in East New York. There we go. All okay. right. Oh, I'm a nice. little off, but I'm originally from project. Queens. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, you know that area too, Jeremy? I was a stone stone throws away from Left Rack City. Okay. Oh, there you okay. go. Yeah. There you go. All right, so we're going to get to the next question. So my twin brother is asking, is Nick on dialysis? And if so, what modality? So are you currently on dialysis right now, Nick? I use a, a uh, I'm on PD right now, which is per, All right, peritoneal, peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis. And uh, I'm currently doing one manual a day. And at night, I sleep with a cycler uh, from okay. Fresenius, the, the Liberty yeah. Cycler. And uh, Okay, Liberty Cycler. Still so tweaking. Drop, drop. It's still yeah. tweaking it. All right, you're getting used yeah. to it. How long have you been on it? Uh, I did my training uh, mid November. And okay. uh, I went on the I went on the cycler around Christmas time, okay. and uh, so for for not quite two months, uh, and uh, but uh, every day is another adventure. It it gets better, you know, and it has gotten better. And mm -hmm. uh, I work pretty closely with the team, and uh, I have a very good PD nurse and a very good team at Fresenius that I I see monthly, including my nephrologist. And uh, that's awesome. A a, a good very dedicated dietitian, social worker and, and, and working in, in uh, conjunction with my PD nurse. And, okay. uh, and we're, we're constantly tweaking the treatment and uh, I tweak it a lot on myself as my you dietitian said, adjustments. you know, yeah. as my dietitian said, you know, you, you, you got to do what makes you feel better and, and uh, you got, you got to listen to your body. And you so know your uh, body best. Yeah. So I have, a pretty, that. I have a very positive UF every day and, uh, which is good. That's good. Filtration rate. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, so it gets better. It gets better. So I'm getting over some nausea, uh, here and there. And, uh, so I'm, I'm the manual. I'm not putting so much in, I'm not dialyzing with so much product anymore. Uh, so that's helping a lot. And, and, uh, I think, I think, uh, we're going to work. I'm going to see the nephrologist this Friday. I'm going to see the team this Friday. I'm going to talk about getting uh, registered for okay. kidney and a couple of other locations. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's all part of it. They, they work really good counseling you and, and helping you with your treatment, you know? So, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with them all. Oh man, that, that means so much to hear that. Uh, Jeremy knows, right? Jeremy, that, that doesn't always happen, right? <laughs> no. And not always. I wish it. I wish it wasn't true. But sometimes, I mean, I went through it trying to get um my first, uh, not my first, my second um, transplant center, where I had a living donor lined up, and when I called them, they said. I'm sorry, Mr. Perocco, you don't have anyone registered under your name. And I said, that's impossible because I have a screenshot here of them uh, registering. She took a screenshot off of, her, off of her computer. And they said, well, we don't have anything here. I said, well, then um, 
that that's what uh, led me to go to uh, Hackensack Hospital. That's where I'm registered right now. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought I when I yeah. was reading the, you know, the your information from the National Kidney Registry. Um, that's where I I'm trying I, to get into. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I hear it's things big. about that. Hackensack. They're one of yeah, the best. They, yeah, they don't do a lot. Of, of transplants every year, but uh, they, I, my understanding is they come very highly recommended. My nephrologist did. Uh, yeah. You can go to Barnabas in New Jersey too. I was registered there at one point and, uh, and, uh, and I live, but I live closer to Hackensack. So if okay. you get a transplant, you got to have a caregiver drive you back and forth several times a week. And you, uh, mm -hmm. so it was, it right. made more sense for me from, from a logistical point, point of view. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I also live close to Presbyterian in, in New York city. So I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm right in that area just above the George Washington bridge. And, You're and, out uh, skipping the jump away. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, I was told that I should register at press at New York Pres also. And, uh, so I'm going to do that. I want to consult with my nephrologist on Friday and, and, uh, see see how this is all going to work so um, actually new york presbyterian is where i was a, a former employee i was okay. a manager over there in the, oh, wow. the central cerro yeah and it's funny because my manager's um i mean my director's name is also Gotti. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow what a coincidence yeah there you go lorraine Gotti. A small world yeah it's mm -hmm. a small yeah. world not a re no relation name, right still. oh okay yeah <laughs> Terrific. Well, lots of connections right. there. I like that, you know, um, a lot of commonality, you know, and, and that can, uh, that's, that's actually a really good thing. You know, uh, Nick is, uh, this is, uh, I'm loving the, the comments. Lisa Baxter is really putting in some great comments and I, and when we get a lot of comments, um, like my twin brothers put some comments in here, you know, we, we start to feel, you know, like people are, that they're on our side, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. when we feel like that many times as a, you know, it's human nature when we feel words of encouragement or when we're feeling that, you know, when we feel like somebody else is, is saying, you know, that I'm sharing this and we feel positive direction, you know, it, it makes us feel less alone. And I think that's so important. You know what I mean? Empathy helps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have, you have to have people on your team, you know, absolutely you know, on your side or feel that they're on your side, you know? So, uh -huh. which is how I felt when I went to Hackensack. Oh, really? I okay, was, great. I was always treated as the only patient that they had at that, at that time. Yeah. Always. That's awesome. Uh, that's excellent. It really is. Cause that, uh, yeah, you know, and I, I hear good things about other hospitals and, and then I, so for the most part, I'm going to generalize. For the most part, I hear really good things about many transplant hospitals, but mm -hmm. it doesn't always happen. And so, um, you know, for the <laughs> most part, every time I've heard anybody talk about Hackensack, I've heard good things. You know, mm -hmm. so Jeremy said good things and then you say good things. I mean, it's, it's kind of a trend here. So I like that. Well, um, the reason why I went to Hackensack was because that's where my cousin had also had her transplant for leukemia. Oh, she had a she had a bone marrow transplant. That, right. That's what sparked me to um, look them up. <laughs> but, you know, also with Columbia Presbyterian, their motto is, we make things better. That's a good motto. Right. Yeah. Great. That, that, Great. That's, yeah. Where, that's it's, it's on their walking bridge, correct? That goes a span, that spans from one building to another. Okay. And it's also the, uh, the hospital for the New York Yankees. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow, so all the players have to, they go there as well, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm going to message you after we're done here, Jeremy, because I I want to find out a little bit about about the logistics of, of commuting there, parking there, that all that stuff, you know. And, oh, uh, oh, definitely. I'll, definitely. I'll ask you those questions when we're off there. So okay, not a problem. Yeah, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about doing um, broadcasts like this is bringing, you know, getting connections, you know, and uh, and, and the stronger. The, the connections we have uh, again, I just find it's powerful because then we're we're uniting with other like-minded people or people that are going through the uh, the same thing or something similar, you know. And this is cool that you have so much in common. I think this is great. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Nick, um, I, I want to go back a little bit to 
the cooking and, and your, your background. So you had kind of kidded that it wasn't so, so good for your health. Um, so do you, do you feel as if maybe that, um, had something to play with how your, your health had maybe gone in such a way that maybe if you'd done things differently or how do you mean that? Or, you know, I, well, I, I have, I have diabetes type, type and, and, uh, it's not, it's neither, it's insulin dependent. So it's kind of type mm -hmm. 1.5. Okay. People, okay. There are people. So, but, uh, because the job required so many hours and I was always at work and I liked being at work, but it, you know, it wasn't, the, that wasn't the issue. The issue, the issue was that because of that, I, I didn't really pay attention to my d disease so much as I was more focused on my career and, and eating, sure. and getting to the best restaurant here and the best restaurant there. And oh, really yeah. I never paid attention to my diet much. So I let, I let the disease fall by the wayside or my taking care of the disease fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And I think that really contributed a great deal to the, to the, uh, to the onset of, of uh, kidney disease. You know, in 2017, I was, I was, uh, diagnosed with a 30 GFR and, and, okay. uh, and so it was still good. But even then I, I, I didn't pay as much attention to that as I should have. And, uh, so uh, I was pretty, I, I still am, and I was always pretty asymptomatic, but, but uh, I, I think had I really gone on a much stricter diet, exercise diet routine, I think I, 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 I might not have been put in, the, I might not have placed myself in the position that I have placed myself in currently. So. Well, you know, hindsight is well, twenty twenty, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. So we have... We I'm have just a question. Joking. Why do you want need this kidney? What is the first thing you want to do once you get it? The first thing I get, I'm going to do is get on an airplane and travel down to Petite Saint Vincent in the Caribbean. <laughs> but, that sounds good. But uh, but I can't travel, so I I mean I, mm -hmm. I I can get up, I can get out, I can walk around, I can do things. But but having this level of kidney disease and being on on PD means means I don't feel really that I can travel to the the way I, I usually would travel, you know? So, right. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. You know, I'm 68 years old. I think I have some life ahead of me. I'm, I'm on an active transplant list. I have my health issues other than, than kidney disease sorted out. My, my A1C for diabetes is 5.5, you know, okay. it has been for a while now. Yeah. I take mm -hmm. care of that now. It's and, better than and, mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm 6.1. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but, you know, we take care of it now that, you know, we've got kidney disease. So, so, mm -hmm. uh, right. And, and, and so I, I think if I, you know, once I, I get a, a successful match and, or, or donor or cadaver that, that, that cadaver that works for me, uh, then I'm, I'm going to certainly take care of that kidney a lot better than I, I took care of the ones I currently have. And, and uh, and I'm just, you know, I'm I'm just going to live life to to the to the the fullest extent that that will allow me to do so. Well, so, yeah. Okay. Well, I hear that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, no. Of course, I'm very religious, and I read a lot of books. I you know what else am I going to do when I'm in dialysis for three and a half hours of you know, a night? Oh, um, you're in hemo. I take it then. Yes, or I am. I'm in hemo in in center dialysis. Um, but one book that I read is, was by Joel Osteen, mm -hmm. which was Live Your Best Life Now. And another book that I read was Every Day is a Friday. He said, if you live every day like it's a Friday instead of a Monday, more people die on a Monday than die on Friday right. wow. because of stress levels. Wow. And Interesting. Yeah. And it's true. More there are more heart attacks on a Monday than on a Friday, statistically. Wow. Well, I'm I'm retired. I don't want to. I don't want to diss the uh, the seriousness of your message. No, I'm retired. No, I'm just saying for everyone I wanna else. Live, I want to live my life like every day is a Saturday. <laughs> and, and a transplant I hear, help you do that. <laughs> I hear that. I mean, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Nick, well, what 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 is your blood type? 
Do you happen A to plus. know? A plus. Oh, okay. So. Okay, because I may be positive. Okay, I, I, is that a rare type? I, I don't. I don't. It's know. A, a a universal recipient. I could right, take anybody's right. uh, anybody's um, um. Yeah, they they told me that uh, A plus kidney. was was similar to that. It was 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 a good blood type for this you disease. You can take A. Could... You can take B. You can take O. You can take A B. Almost. Okay. Almost right. everything. But the the really cool thing about being connected to the National Kidney Registry (NKR) is that you know they really promote the they promote it doesn't matter you know the they promote the voucher right and so you can regardless of which blood type you are um, if if someone isn't your isn't a match with you then they'll use that data and they'll right. use procurement organizations and find a match and the donor that does donate who isn't a match to you when they do donate then it it will increase your chances it speeds up the process um and you it will actually be much faster than if you waited for a living donor angel on the you know transplant list if you can get somebody to donate even if it's on again the voucher it speeds up your chances it's right. uh, many of the uh, people that i've interviewed recently that have had that um shane blanchard is one of them it's and it and he's and it's not um average okay um but I, and i'm not sure if you've had the pleasure or pr privilege yet nick of meeting um online of course uh shane blanchard but he's a great guy um wonderful personality great sense of humor it makes me laugh but his cousin donated to him or donated his kidney, but his cousin was not the right blood type. And Shane Blanchard is on the National Kidney Registry as well, NKR. And um, it was literally like a week and a half, less than maybe less than a week and a half later, af you know, after his cousin had donated to, you know, someone else. Right. A total stranger. It was only it was. Either a week and a half later or less than a week half, week and a half later, Shane Blanchard got the call that they had found a match for him. And it's, it put him up and increased his chances, you know, um, and they yeah. found it. And so it's it's a uh, it's it's wonderful to find um, a, a living kidney donor. And but, you know, um, regardless whether, whether they're the right blood type or not, man, we, then NKR does a fabulous job of promoting. Oh, yeah. The voucher, and I think that's awesome. They do a really good job of doing that, and I think that if we can continue to do that, then you know. And you know, Jared, I, I, as you know, I was reading up on the voucher. A person mm -hmm. can have up to five vouchers. Yes, yes, you're right, and and so that's, um, it, it's it's powerful. It really is. Mm -hmm. uh, the more I, the more I learn about the voucher, the more. You know, I hear about other people who have done it. Um, I I just want to be able to share that information to more kidney disease patients because if they're not already connected to NKR, you know, I I, I think they need to be. They really do. <laughs> and also, think, Nick, um, yes, I don't know if you know this, but the director of kidney transplant is Dr. David Serer, and he's the he's in Hackensack. He's a nephrologist. Yes. Yeah. He's the He's director of transplant. In the, in the transplant, in the kidney transplant program. That is correct. Yeah. And he's a, he's a big advocate for um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the for kidney chains and also for the uh, for the kidney exchange and also for mm -hmm. the, the kidney voucher program. Okay. Right. All right. He's a, he's a big he's a big uh, advocate for it. That's awesome. I'd, I'd That's like to cool. see I'd like to see some advocacy and, and the government get involved with promoting yeah. tax benefits for people who donate organs, live who who, who do live donation, uh, some kind of right. benefits, some kind of cash yeah. benefits, some kind of some kind of you know from tax the government. Benefit. Yeah. Some something kind of, to you know, help. Yeah. Something that you can just roll off roll off your income taxes if you're a high earner or, or some or get a get some kind of, of cash benefit 
and also i don't think people who who are potential donors who may want to donate realize how how easy the surgery is i i understand it's performed laparoscopically in many cases yeah, that's and, correct yes that's and, right and you know and you can be and that said you can be up and around in a day or two you know so, so actually you know. the average person who donates is out of the hospital in less than a week yeah and and some of them are, are out of the hospital the next day because it's a mm -hmm. laparoscopic procedure you know exactly and, and uh, I don't think people realize that. They think it's a major, major surgery, uh, abdominal surgery. So, I mean, you know. it used to be. It used to it be. Used and that's to, why, yeah. exactly. You're used exactly to cut right. you, they, they used to cut you in half, basically, to get that kidney out. But right. now yes. it's done because uh, when I worked in Columbia Presbyterian, I, that's where I first started observing surgeries. And my first uh, observance was a kidney transplant. I saw it from start to finish, from patient A to patient B. Wow. So it's funny, not really funny, but it's weird how uh, an organ that's the size of your fist does all that work. Yeah. You know? And here we are on dialysis, you know, instead of having 24-7, if you're on hemodialysis, you're only getting 12 hours total a week. Right. Yeah. Instead, of instead of the 367 hours for 24-7. Right. Did you try PD? Just uh, no. I, I, I was approached to do PD, but I... Uh, because of my situation at home and mm -hmm. how far away the bathroom is. Right. Um, they, uh, they didn't recommend it. Okay. Wow. Okay. okay. And plus I don't have the room to store all the, all those supplies. Right. They, they, there is a lot of that. I'm, I'm surrounded by it down here in my basement. <laughs> really? <laughs> boxes. I mean, boxes of dialysis pollution. For, for, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, my whole thing is I want to separate myself from dialysis as much as possible. Uh, I see that as my job. You know, and me being on disability now, that's how I treat it, as my job. And plus, I want to get out of the house. I, want, I like going to the center and meeting with people and interacting with my, my technicians. Mm -hmm. oh, well, managing kidney disease is a full-time job. It you know? is. Oh, yeah. it, it, you're oh, yeah. exactly right. It is. A, it, yeah. It's. It's a job. Yeah. It is. You don't have to. You don't have to apologize for it or, or make excuses for it. It just is. <laughs> it is. I mean, it I. Is. I just got back my blood work because they they took my blood work um, the week before last, and they took it again last uh, last Tuesday, and geez, just. Trying to keep your blood work within parameters is so hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day before I go to the bathroom, after I come back, I weigh myself before I eat, after mm -hmm. I eat, just to make sure I'm within a certain limit. And I had a, I bought a digital scale that I had calibrated to the weighing scale at the center. So I know exactly how much weight I, I've gained, especially over the weekend. Well, so you know, Nick, uh, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about um, your family, because you talk about, your, you know, in the beginning of the your information on the NKR website, um, you mentioned that you've got, you have two adult, or uh, yes, two adult children and four young grandchildren. So family right there from the very beginning of introducing yourself who am i my name is nick and i need a kidney to live i'm married with two adult children uh four young grandchildren so right, right off the bat you're talking about your family so you obviously part of your your drive um uh, part of your reason to move forward and have a better quality of life seems to be your family grandkids and, <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. 
you know, mm -hmm. and and uh, whoever thought you'd have him, you know, <laughs> right. I, I got him, you know, yeah. And, uh, watching him grow up is is, uh, is 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 just a joy, you know. Mm -hmm. That's all you can say about it. And uh, and my daughter, you know, is a teacher, works full time, and and she also has to raise those four kids, and and uh, and so she, you know. So and she does that well, and uh, but I I don't because of all that time that it takes her, I don't really think she's a candidate for a donor. And, mm -hmm. and uh, my my son and I aren't close, so that rules him out. And and uh, okay, and and, uh, and my wife's a, ki a a a cancer survivor, and she's the same age as me, and she's she's got a lot of concern. So I, you know, the thing about about donors is you don't push them. You know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I learned that, you know, you don't push it. You put the news out there. You let them know your situation. If they want to donate, they'll donate. They'll donate. Yeah. You know, I hear you. And and even if they don't donate, you can at least keep them as friends. You know, that's and, right. And if right. You push them. You may lose that. You know, so. <laughs> so yeah. You know, and so. And that's very true. I mean, yeah. me being a B positive, I can take anyone's kidney. Mm -hmm. I come from a very large extended family. I have 18 cousins. And when they all found out that I had um, kidney failure, not one came forward to say, hey, Jeremy, I'd like to get tested to see if I can be a, a donor to you. Yeah. Not one. Yep. Not one. Wow. Wow. But you and, want to keep them your family, so don't don't blame them. There's a lot that goes. No, I don't. Personal. I, I I said no hard no no hard feelings. I'm not going to put the guilt trip on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I'm just that's glad that's important. That, that's the good yeah. way to be. Because, like you, I have an adult son who is 26 years old. We're estranged. Mm -hmm. And the last thing he said to me was, "I hope you die oh, waiting God. for your kidney." No, oh, uh, that's, that's a shame. I, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I saw him when my mother died, and you know, and everyone saw me. They said they were like, "You look sick. You look healthy." I said, and I lifted up my shirt. I said, "Look at these track marks. Does this uh, show show that I'm healthy?" I said, "No." I said, "You're seeing stuff on the outside." I'm wearing a suit because it's my mother's um funeral. So I'm going to look my best, of course. And they said, but you really don't look sick. I said, that's because I take care of myself. It's a 24-7 job. Right. To stay as healthy as mm -hmm. you can be, especially Absolutely. when you're trying to get on the transplant list. Right. You know, you can't cut your your uh, treatments uh, short because it, it'll, it'll show up. You can't. Um, you have to keep your phosphorus within within limits. You have to keep everything within limits. You no, know, you have to be within a certain BMI index. Mm -hmm. I believe in Hackensack, the cutoff is thirty five. No. Oh, uh, body mass index. Yeah. yeah, I mean my body mass index is twenty nine. Yeah, I'm slightly overweight, but I'm okay. Yeah, well, I've lost twenty pounds since I went on PD. So, you know. Wow. All right. Wow. Well, a lot of liquid, you know. Yeah. Everywhere. And uh huh. And, uh, you're putting. You know, you're taking I, off the fluids better than it sounds. You're taking off the fluids. The IQ. Yeah. The, the uh, what KTV, uh, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Uh, KT, KT over, KT over v. V. That, that, That's gone yeah. up over four, and, and mm -hmm. uh, the creatinine has dropped from six point three to four point three. So. I'm I'm wow. doing okay in in that department. So, okay, you know it's 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 working for me. We're just tweaking the treatments to to keep it working. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. You know, and so blood you pressure know, is good too. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Blood pressure is is, a, is also a good metric because oh yeah, you know it's it's the um, many people that are on dialysis, whether it's PD or home hemo or hemodialysis in center is that the the blood pressure can sometimes be too low you know oh, yeah. and right. sometimes it's too high you know and so it's a balancing act of course you know and it's uh when it's too low 
you know, um, Jeremy knows what I'm talking about is you'll see patients that will, you know, they'll, they'll pass out, you know, and it's scary. Which I've done also. Yeah. I've passed out in the chair. I stopped taking my blood pressure medication when, uh, when I went on PD. So, uh, really? So you, it was, was because it's such a good level. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I started off on three, but I'm only on one currently. Mm Mm-hmm. I was so, on uh, lisinopril, um, uh-huh. amlodipine, and metropolol. Now I only have okay. metropolol. No, That's it. No, now I have a – the nephrologist put me back on a, a half dose of uh, Valsartan and uh, cut out the amlodipine and cut out the HCTV, TZ, and mm-hmm. Valsartan. Huh. So, so okay. you know, she's, she's done well with me, and, and uh, she listens to me when I tell it's her. A good That's good. It's a very good – it's it good is. to have uh, a good relationship with your nephrologist. Oh I, gosh, I told them so all. I, I, yeah, I, so I told them all. Look, I felt better before I went on dialysis. I said, <laughs> here. And then, yeah. and then we started tweaking. We started. That's when we seriously started tweaking the treatments. And, uh-huh. uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so now uh, I, that's, I, that's, I feel pretty good. You know, I mean, it's it. Oh, my God. It's so powerful when you feel as though your nephrologist is listening to you, though. Um, yeah. Oh, that's key. It's key. It is. Because they know that if I don't feel good, I'm on my phone texting my uh, my nephrologist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because it, it really, to me, it's an indication that your nephrologist cares. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because they're, if they wouldn't, if they didn't care, they wouldn't really listen. You know what I mean? And that that's a, a great indication that there's you know, a level of care involved if they're listening to you. That's awesome. So I, I, I left this comment up here because we were really already talking about it. You know, and you, we talked about how kidney disease is a full time. It's a job. It's a full time job. Is. And, you know, my twin brother here, Jeff, he, you know, he he's uh, saying right here, does he ask, does kidney disease and dialysis consume his life? And in a matter of speaking, you know, I would say yes, but I'll, I'll have you answer that, Nick. Uh well, it's it's certainly consuming more of it than it used to. I mean, yeah. before I went on dialysis, you know, I, I did whatever I wanted to do. I like I said, I was asymptomatic for mm-hmm. the most part. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, but but uh, COVID is you know combined with kidney disease is keeping me home most days. I mean, I'll still walk out to the library. I'll still go here. I'll still I'll I'll drive here. I'll I'll dine out with my wife on Saturday night. You know that okay. that still goes on. Yeah, but mm-hmm. uh, uh, it it isn't it, at this point. It isn't the life that I that I I had envisioned for myself in retirement. Mm, no. So so uh, you know, but that's my that's my saying. You know, comes comes to the fore, and it's an old Yiddish saying. And it's you know, man plans and God laughs. Yeah, yeah. I I read that on your the NKR <laughs> uh, your your on your it's uh, the first uh, opening uh, statement. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it does. Man plans, and God laughs. The old Yiddish proverb, and I, I read that and I remember that uh, made me laugh a little bit. But so, um, the the reason why I bring stuff up like that is that when you know I've been involved with kidney disease for uh, my sister in law has had kidney disease since two thousand eight. Um, I have an older brother who has kidney disease, and I have an uncle. You know, so I'm fairly versed, so to speak, right and you know, I know what KT over V is, you know, and I, I'm fairly versed, you know, I, I certainly, um, I'm always trying to learn more with that being said, you know, I do this broadcast so that we can reach a potential living donor. And for the most part, statistically, um, the, the potential living donor doesn't fully understand the physical and emotional problems that a kidney disease patient goes through. Um, there's oh, just boy, not, do I know that. Right. There's not that level of understanding. And so with his, my twin brother's question about does it consume your life, um, I wanted to focus on that, you know, before we end the show, because I think it's important for anybody who isn't uh, familiar with kidney disease that we can shed some light on that. So my this leads me to my next question uh, my my question for you, Nick, is that many people that I interview that have kidney failure, um, including Jeremy, 
they've talked about chronic fatigue. Oh, it looks like we lost them. I'm going to bring them back. Okay. Back. You know, many people. I'm there back. Yeah. <laughs> we're at you again. So many people talk about chronic fatigue, Nick. And uh, many of them talk about uh, insomnia, um, sometimes vomiting. Um, of course, we just talked about that when the low, low, low blood pressure, you know, that there's an issue there. Mm -hmm. So my question, I guess, for you is, can you, will you talk a little bit about your daily struggle of things that you go oh, through sure. daily? Oh, yeah. Uh, look, look, before be, before we started tweaking this thing, I was weak all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd step out of this to sit on the toilet with my head between my knees, you know, just to yeah. get strength back. You have a breath. What's going on. That's why I said I felt Absolutely. better before I went on PD. A and uh, I'm still going through nausea issues, which I'm tweaking now because I think it has <laughs> a lot to do. I think it has a lot to do with the amount of dialysate in your in your peritoneum and the and the, during the dwell time and the amount of uf that adds to that uh, yes and and what that does is it squeezes your stomach and you, you can't get the digestive process going and and it you just throw up you know uh it it just uh so that the only meal i was able to take comfortably was breakfast and uh and then a little bit of lunch and then i'd go get set for the night and then i'd there you'd go you know by 11 o'clock you'd be emptying out again you know you'd be you'd be throwing up again yeah you know, on and this a daily is, basis you this know. is a daily thing yes yeah. I why do you that. think i lost 20 pounds part of it was you know how did i lose 20 <laughs> you're, pounds you're all checking everything uh, yeah. so, that's uh, why i always tell everyone this is the best diet i ever had i said if you're right. if i'm ever overweight i know i go i'm going to dialysis so i i would take that extra weight off Mm -hmm. right. not a big deal and they this said, is the thing i'm going to i'm sorry this is the thing i'm going to bring up with my uh with my docs and my team on on friday is like look mm -hmm. this 2000 manual ain't cutting it you know <laughs> it's it's going to be 1000 to 1500 because that's that's preventing the nausea at night you know mm -hmm. and you guys can make it up the other at you know some other way but you uh -huh. know, it's 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 difficult it's it's difficult to do a full fill of, of dialysis uh, when when you've eaten you know okay I said, gotcha. it's not going to work because you couple that with with the uf and you know so you got you've got a full stomach and you've got 2300 milliliters in your and gut. you're you're trying to add more right yeah and I yeah said, no, it's, it's just now do you feel bloated go, you know also draining you know sometimes it's a problem mm -hmm. you know you got to do the happy dance to get the drain out you know on the pd and uh, for an hour, you know, PD, you know, the drain is supposed to take 20 minutes, but sometimes the drain will take an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and, and so you're oh awake for that because yeah. it won't happen. So, you know, right. you wake up at three o'clock and you don't go back to bed till five. And so my, you know, I used to get up at around eight o'clock every day. And now I get up at 1030 every day because of all the constant, you know, constant. filling, Dwelling, draining, filling, dwelling, draining, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, how long that takes and, and uh, all of these things, you know, you know, I, I for me, it, you know, you, it, you know, you, I have that attitude that, well, you deal with it, you know, but it's, it's the new normal, caregiver. right? It doesn't mean it's, it's easy. It, it, caregiver. You, you know, you just, you just made a, another great point, And Jeremy knows this is that the, it's, it's not only difficult for you but it, you're right it's difficult for the care partner as well right yeah you know it's it's really difficult i mean i'm in a separate room now but thought with with the the noise of the machine yeah you know and it's noisy don't let anybody kid you it's 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 <laughs> it's not like when you're training you know uh -huh. in, in, a, in, in a large room in the hospital you yeah know? it's it's noisy i can sleep through it but i can't because you've become accustomed to it yeah but uh you know mm -hmm. the, the, those things in it, and then you know all all the hoses, and you know you've got it. You know the aseptic techniques you have to master and and pay attention to. You know, oh, yes. I've not had peritonitis, but you know, uh, That's good. I don't want That's good. I don't want to experience right. it, and, and uh, so you know all of those things, and uh, so it's just something you you know it's like like Jeremy's said it's it becomes part of your job, you know all of these yeah. all of these things you know so, and thank God I'm retired. Well, 
I don't know what I'd be <laughs> able to do get, if I, if right. I had to go make a living. You know, on you're right. You're right. Many of the, many kidney warriors that are on dialysis, um, it's difficult for many of them to to work and, and you know uh, and have a full time job. Um, some of them will do PD because they feel like that helps them still have an income and still work. But even with PD, like you've just expressed now verbally. Um, that's not um, a bowl of cherries. It's, you know, it's, yeah. there's well, a, anywhere you, any way you slice it, kidney disease is not easy for any one of, any one of the people that I've interviewed and anybody in the kidney disease community. It's different for each person because you have different personalities and your bodies are different, but not any one of them have I ever interviewed has ever said this is the easiest thing I've ever gone through. There's no, there's no such thing, you know. It, yeah. it is a daily battle, which is why I, I it'll put you to your limits. It really For does. That work, why, it's like having two jobs, right? Know, two full jobs. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's and, absolutely uh, true. Um, and so before we end, because we're we're nearing the end here, um, what I'd like to do is, you know, now that we've talked a little bit about how it makes you feel and and what it what your daily, you know, um, what you go through daily. Uh, what I'd like to do is ask you and Lisa kind of asked the, or asked this question earlier, but what do you envision your life being and, and what kind of better quality of life would it be after transplant? Well, after transplant, I know there's going to be a transition period and a lot of drugs to take, you mm. know, and, and in the age of COVID, uh, having immunosuppression Got to be careful issues yeah. to deal with mm -hmm. um, is, is, is going to be something. Um, mm -hmm. So all of those things, you know, making sure you take your drugs at the right time of day, the right amount. I understand that's paramount. Uh, but I just like to get a significant percentage of my life back. Amen. The way it used exactly. To be, you know, I mean, and that's what I, I envision was... happening, you know, so. I feel the same way, Nick. When when I was working, I was doing ninety to a hundred hours of work every week because I worked weekends. And when I got sick, I got sick at work, and I went from doing ninety to a hundred hours a week to nothing in zero in no time flat. So that was the biggest change for me. Big impact, yeah. 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 Huge. Huge. Yeah. It's just, you know, I, I just, I, I can do things. I can go out. I can walk. I'm waiting for winter to end so I can walk more. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, I will keep up the, the walk. All of those things, you know, you know, just, yeah. just to be able to do uh, it. Cause you know, I remember when I, ride, you know, all of those. I remember things. when Bam! I first went, used to when out. I first went to Hackensack, they said, How far can you walk? Can you walk up the stairs? I said, Yeah, I can walk up the stairs. They said, can you walk up two flights of stairs? I said, yeah, not a problem. They And they said, we want to see you walk. I said, no, no problem. I'll walk. And I didn't. They said, okay, we believe you. I said, you want me to go up another flight of stairs? I'll go up another, fl another flight of stairs. I said, if you can do it, do it. But if you feel dizzy, don't. Mm -hmm. We don't need you to, uh, to faint. Right. I said, sure. well, I... If I can walk three miles round trip to go to the corner store, I can do this no problem. Yeah. And they said, okay. I want to sail again. I want to get on a sailboat again in the, in the Hudson and, 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 and sail the boat. You know? I hear you. Uh, I hear you. So those are the things that I used to do, and, and uh, I don't really do them anymore because uh, what if some issue comes up? We've got to bring it back into right away to port. or, or you know Exactly. And, I worry about right, that. right. It's uh, it, even though it's more portable, so to speak, than someone who's in center like Jeremy. It it's still problematic because the the machine is you still you have still to got a plan, right? You still have to plan it. You have There's to a lot of planning, sure, right? Right, uh, and then you've got to make sure that you're in a sterile area when you're using it. I mean, there's just it's it's still very problematic, uh, and that's mm -hmm. the point. Uh, that I try to really make for those that aren't familiar with this disease is that, you know, because again, like what Jeremy said is that oftentimes they look at these kidney warriors, you two, and they, and they make that mistake 
and say, you don't look sick. Well, you know what? Sometimes sickness isn't on the outside, you know, like, no. you know, like in, in the, when we read in the Bible, many people that were sick, they looked sick on the outside because we didn't have all of the medical and advances that we had, that we have today. And they genuinely exactly. looked sick, you know, um, <laughs> but okay. Sickness doesn't always have to appear on the outside. Okay. No. You can't say that someone's going to look sick when their kidneys are failing because yeah, they may be bloated, but someone who's bloated may just look maybe uh, moderately, you know, overweight, you know, and who's to say that that's because of bloating. They, if someone, if someone doesn't know you, they don't, they're not going to think that you look sick just because you're bloated. And there are just so many misconceptions by looking at someone's appearance and I get it. Okay. It's human nature. It is. We do that. Uh, we do it without thinking. We see that we look at somebody and we look and we make a, a quick sort of judgment. We do it without even thinking. We do. But the, I want to make sure that everybody understands that the daily struggle and the daily problems that kidney disease patients go through is real. It's renal and it's real. Okay. You yeah. guys. <laughs> I like you're, that. <laughs> yes. You're literally what I call warriors. And I mean that with respect is that you're going through insomnia. You're going through, you know, fatigue, chronic fatigue. When I say fatigue, I don't mean you're just tired like you could sleep. I mean, chronic fatigue where it, you're literally zapped of energy. I haven't there, slept for 40 hours currently. That's because real. Of my insomnia. Yeah, it's real. I have my, I had my treatment uh, yesterday. And I still haven't slept yet. It's real. Well, um, so I never knew what fatigue was until I did this. So mm, now I know. I know what fatigue is now. And I, I can't want... even make my bed without getting uh, winded. So we've got someone, uh, the lovely uh, Thelma Warner is, is watching in comments. And she says, tell me about it. She knows exactly what you guys are saying. Um, Thelma uh, is uh, by every description a warrior she's a heart transplant recipient who's currently on dialysis because of kidney failure isn't that powerful it's just incredible what this lady um she just is inspiring to me and um thank you for watching thelma shout out to you and for commenting i appreciate your comments and i appreciate you following. Yeah. oh yeah um okay. so but I, and again, I know I, uh, I sometimes get really passionate and you can see it in, in my face and, my, and the way I talk, but I really want to make a difference. And I want to make a difference today on your behalf, Nick, because uh, it it's so important that, that people that aren't connected to this disease, that are someone who may be listening either live right now or as a replay later, has a just a sliver, okay, just a glimpse of what your daily problem or struggle is and if they can they're not going to totally get it but if they can have just a just a sliver okay and with you explaining it and and telling us and and on this broadcast explaining that it's not an easy life and it's a low quality of life if they if they just understand low quality of life Okay, just those words and understand that statement. If they can live my life for two hours, <laughs> it's, it's, that's, all I, that's all they need to do. And and I just want them to understand that by doing by doing something that that anybody with faith would do, okay, that follows our our Savior's footsteps, okay, is to do something Christ-like. And if you're healthy. If you're healthy and, and you're well and you can donate, please act on that and, and become a living donor, please. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I believe they call that being an altruistic donor. Yes, when you're a total stranger and there's no mm -hmm. connection at all to Nick and you've never met him before. Altruistic is someone who's never had any sort of connection, never met you, and never had any affiliation. So, yes. Um, you know. It's like what my mom said before she passed. I don't know what you're going through, but I can see. I can only say I can feel what you do, what you're going through. 
but I don't know what you do. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you survive. And it's true. I mean, even my even my girlfriend, you know, she says, why are you so depressed? Why are you being this way? I don't like it. And I said, because I need a kidney. And thank you for volunteering to donate to me when my family won't even donate. Yeah. But until you live my life, you'll you never know. Understand. You don't understand. It's no. the truth. Well, guys, I, I'm super happy we did this. Um, Nick, it's been a pleasure to to have you on the Warriors Quest show to get to know you a little bit. And I'll continue to follow. Um, I'll continue to follow you. Um, it's a, it, I mean, it, it you've got a, a great connection in Lisa Thompson. Um, and so I have no doubt that she's going to do what she can to help you. She's a great advocate. Uh, and I'll continue to share this myself. Uh, I know that, um, you know, that Jeremy has a lot of passion and wants to help and, and he has a love for, for helping people as well. And so mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for coming on. Um, what I'd like to do just very quickly is um, what I call shout out time. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to have to change this graphic and make it a little bit um, smaller because it ends up taking like uh, too much of uh, <laughs> my guest space right there. But shout out. Okay. And I, you got to, picture of me, you know, shouting. So who would you like to shout out right now? Say thank you or, you know, or give some sort of uh, accolades, props, whatever, kudos. Who would you like to shout out, Nick? I'd like to, to shout out to all the members of the Alpine Country Club and the people who have known me, who are now following me on Facebook or friended me on Facebook and, and really have, have given me great wishes, you know, terrific wishes and uh i appreciate it all i really do awesome mm. awesome well i will well, definitely follow you on on facebook nicholas thank you i look forward to it yeah mm -hmm. you guys get more connected you have so much in common that's awesome um please you know uh, the the more we get connected the stronger we are i, I always say honestly Mm -hmm. so god bless god bless thank you so much guys thank you jeremy for co-hosting and thank you nick for coming on all right have a blessed evening okay hey, thank Same you very much I, I appreciate it yeah thank you all right all right bye 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 all right you guys so we've heard from nick nick Gotti. um such a pleasure um such a pleasure um i mean a love for his family love for his grandchildren and, you know, talks uh, so, so much about how his life can change. And that's what I wanted to focus on a little bit more and emphasize is that the quality of life, all right, can change. And that's what we can do is we can make a difference. We can make a difference and make his life a better quality of life. All we really need to do, okay, is get this information out there. All right. It, it's, it's as easy as clicking on the share button. Super simple. Just click on that share button and don't be stingy. All right. Don't be stingy. Please click on that share button, throw down the hammer and click share. Uh, so that's the first step. And the second thing, all right, that we can do is if you are healthy, if you're well enough, all right, and you can donate yourself, then please, I'm going to put the information out there again, right here. Okay. It's uh, nkr.org forward slash. CVZ285. All right, I'm going to leave this up there for just a moment. I'm going to ask you to please go to, you know, go to this link here. Um, visit this site. It's the National Kidney Registry. You'll be able to read a little bit more information about him and how he loves to play chess, how he loves the Hudson, how he uh, loves, you know, his ch his grandchildren, his two children. Um, He's married. Um, he talks about how over 20 years he was a volunteer restaurant chair. Uh, there's so many different, his passion for sailing, which I forgot to mention again. And he mentioned that before he wants to go sailing again. So, you know, go to this link, learn more about him. Um, and, and if you can try to connect with him on Facebook and be a, you know, be a Facebook friend for him. Um, but please, if you're healthy and well enough, please become a donor for him. Okay, it's, it's something that you'll never, 
I've never, I've never met anybody, never met a living kidney donor who has ever regretted having become a living donor and saved somebody's life. It will literally change your life if you do this. I appreciate, I uh, appreciate your following. I appreciate uh, any of the shares. Appreciate your comments, uh, and please continue to share this for Nick and his behalf so that we can get his information out there more. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks. Peace. I'm out. All right. Please continue to share. Much love and respect to all of you. All right. I'm going to find that outro. Where is it? Here we go. Outro. There it is. Boom. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Sound right, boys.